Hi guys, you've got Nick Berry here from Seed Terminator. I'm at the Lonsdale factory where we have our Pro 1000 on the class combine and a few other machines as well. And um, I guess I just wanted to talk about some key elements of having a successful time terminating and harvesting at the same time. A lot of our customers say, I didn't know how to set up a header until I've had a terminator. And there's a little bit of truth to that. And, and I guess that the thing is that the early terminators didn't have a huge amount of belt capacity. So we'd run out of power in the belt and we'd have belt slip as soon as the sieve was overloading. And on some machines, we'd also have sieve overloading on the left or the right, so an uneven distribution on the sieve. So the terminator was a real symptom of what was going in on the combine. Um, and customers found that that was sort of an, an indicator to say, you know what, I need to change my settings and get less sieve loading. Now that we've moved to these pro platforms, they have a huge amount of belt capacity. The mills have a huge amount of capacity. These Aero Impact 4s can handle the green material. They can handle the chaff throughput. They can even handle a fair bit of straw. And that kind of feedback is, is eroded a little bit other than the, the combine runs out of horsepower. So we still need to set up the combine to have good performance um, thinking about the Terminator, it's just we're not getting those belt speed alarms as much. And, and really it all comes down to how you set up the crop to start with. So if there's a lot of green weeds out there, um, then, then you're gonna have a lot of green material that ends up in the mill and that's gonna use a lot of power slow the machine down. So it, it is worth desiccating if you're arming and arming and quite often it's worth double knocking desiccating. So using a, a paraquat and a glyphosate. So you, you're getting the drying, um, both that burn off drying and also from the ground up drying from glyphosate. So often it is worth doing that because you'll get um, more material through the machine. You'll be able to harvest faster. The, the, the harvester actually prefers it being dry too. So you will get that benefit there. And then after that, like it's how the, the harvest is set up in order to have the least amount of material on the sieves as you can, while still getting the grain, grain out of the, the straw. So you, you want to make sure that you are threshing it properly, but as soon as you overthresh, you end up with shorter straws of material and that ends up on the sieve and that's just more material to process, more power. What you want is the minimum amount of threshing, which means that that straw is not being broken up. It goes out the back of the harvester and out through the chopper. If you're not breaking up that straw, you're also saving a lot of power in the rotor itself. So it's a, it is actually doubling that effect because over threshing means you're wasting power actually threshing, and then you're putting more material through the mills, which then need to be turned into dust. So effectively you end up with a lot of dust being produced um, and, and that's, um, going to slow the whole machine down, it's going to use more fuel and it's really not worth it. So harvester setup is critical with a Terminator it's, and it's really all about that threshing system. How do you do that? Well, we do need to, really it's, it's about how much material is coming out in the chaff versus the straw. So you, a, a dropping a windrow of straw is really handy because you can look at the straw quality so you can, before it's being chopped and you can see, okay, is this being broken up? Is there grain in there? If there is grain in that straw, then that means that you need to actually thresh it harder. If there isn't grain in there and the straw looks quite beat up, then potentially you can reduce the rotor speed or reduce the, uh, or you can increase the concave clearance or change some threshing elements to reduce that amount of threshing. And on the terminator side, a kill stall um, bypassing the mill to, to look at the distribution on the sieve and also um, just the, the volume of material and also what it looks like. If there's a lot of short straw in there, broken up straw, then potentially there is over threshing. So we're not getting those, uh, that real feedback with the alarms, but certainly the Terminator will slow the combine down horrendously if you are over threshing. Um, so it is worth trying to get that, that mix right. Automation on the machine is helpful, but also could, can introduce issues with um, not really knowing what's going on. So you need to consult with the dealer to try and work out the best way to set that machine up um, with the automation. But I, I always think the best way is to go out and have a look. If the straw is looking 
under threshed, then you need to make sure that the grain's getting out. If it's looking over threshed, then you, you can tone it down a little bit and save some power and go faster. The reality is, is that we can, we can improve this mill maybe 10% more in the future, but by just turning the dial on the rotor speed by 100 RPM, you might use 30% more fuel just like that. So there's so much power in setting this machine up right to get the best capacity. And it's yeah, crazy not to have a crack at it. So I welcome you all to try and do your best and head a set up and you'll have a much better time with the Terminator. In terms of setting up the Terminator itself, there's just two belt tensions and you're off and running.